So here we are in Abbottabad, uh, I parked my TIE fighter here, not very straight I'm afraid, and we're here to learn about ligands. So let's infiltrate the compound. Well first of all there's a water molecule, and that has two lone pairs, so that's a bit of a clue as to what a ligand is. Moving on around, following these ligands, there's the chloride iron, and that has one, two, three, four lone pairs. So again, it seems that ligands have lone pairs. Round the corner here to the cyanide iron, two lone pairs. So that's the first part of the definition, that all ligands must have a lone pair that can be donated. Inside the Abbott Lang compound, where's Mr. Bin Laden? Oh, there's the ammonia molecule with another lone pair. These are almost all of the ligands that you need to know. Hydroxide's missing, but the rest you need to know. Now, this potassium plus iron, that cannot be a ligand. It's positive for a start, but mainly it has no lone pairs available for bonding. And this ammonium iron also has no lone pairs available for bonding, so it cannot be a ligand. So what must a ligand bond to? Well, let's move to the third floor. Oh my god, there he is. So it is true that birds are descended from dinosaurs, apparently. Right, let's jump up onto the roof. Now it seems to be safe. There's uh, the ammonia molecule. And notice it has a lone pair of electrons uh, that I've colored in kind of dark orange. And this lone pair of electrons can be donated to a central transition metal atom or iron to form a dative covalent bond. And that's a definition of a ligand. Now you should draw an arrow, which I've represented by the rocket, to show that both electrons uh, from the ligand are going to covalently, dative covalently bond with the central iron or atom. All right, Dr. Atkinson should be able to catch me. I'm going to run off and jump. It's all gone terribly wrong again. Oh, now, where did I put that spaceship? <laughs>